to move from supply side options now to look at demand side adaptation options. In many instances, this is the low hanging fruit. Demand side reduction or demand reduction that is using less water is relatively easy to implement and it reduces stress on the system. There are two types of demand management we should be talking about or demand options. The first is the soft option, which is around working with existing equipment, if you like, but using less through changes in behavior. The second is more of the engineering or hard option, which is changing to more efficient equipment in the water use system. I'm going to look at the three main water use domains that we've talked about previously when looking at demand management. The first is urban situations. The second is industrial and business water use and the third is agriculture. In urban settings, there's no single demand side option that solves all of our problems. We really have to use multiple options in concert together to make, and, and doing that can make a big impact. The first one of those I want to cover, we've talked about already, but I do sort of consider it to be a demand side option, and that's around leak, leakage repair. So reducing the leakage through the distribution system can really reduce the demand on the supply system. Coupled with that is pressure management. If you reduce the pressure in the supply system, that, that then reduces demand, first by reducing the amount of water that is lost through leakages, but also reducing the amount of water that's flowing through households. So imagine you're having a shower and the water pressure has been reduced by 50%. In the time that you have your shower, you'll be using roughly 50% less water, and that'll be 50% less water that goes down the drain. A second entry point to demand management in urban areas is around building standards and regulations. By hard coding water efficient equipment into building standards, all new houses and properties that are built would have higher efficiency. And we can also work to retrofit buildings, so buildings that already exist, by bringing in new and improved equipment when it's replaced. We can also look at other regulations that um, change the demand manage the change demand. A another form of demand management that's talked about a lot is pricing. So by increasing the price of water that people pay, they, the idea is that you will reduce their demand. Now, there's not a lot of evidence of the effectiveness of this from across Africa, but if we look at uh, research from, from Europe and, and the USA, pricing is not always successful. And this is because the price of water is actually quite low. So using a whole lot more water doesn't actually make a big difference to your bill. It might increase it by, say, $10 or something like that. What does work is tiered and informative pricing. The way tiered pricing works is the more you use, the more you pay. So your last 20% of the water that you use might actually account for 50% of your bill. Another option in demand management is actually the use of small-scale infrastructure that we've talked about previously, such as rainwater harvesting in an urban setting. So here you can imagine a household capturing rainfall from their roof and using it to water their garden and fill their swimming pool. And that avoids stress on the formal supply system the, the, water, the water use by that household on the, on the main supply system would be reduced. Moving on to industrial demand management, the important thing to note in the industrial and business sector is that many of the efficiency options that would reduce demand actually save money in the longer term. So, for instance, by putting in a more efficient processing plant in, in a factory, your, the, water, the money that you save by your water saving is actually going to pay off for that investment, but on a time scale perhaps of 10 years. The main problem we have is that most business businesses are don't have that kind of long-term thinking. So the accountants and shareholders are interested in profits this year and next year. So changing the way business models work to allow them to invest in longer term sustainability, water, sustain, water sustainability investments is, is an important change that needs to happen in the business and industrial sector. Agriculture is obviously really important. Remember, it's the largest user of water globally. About 70% of all abstracted water goes into agriculture. So even small changes 
in agricultural water use can make a big difference on the stress on the water supply system. The best or the most important way to do that is through irrigation efficiency. What we mean by irrigation efficiency is the proportion of water that's actually delivered through irrigation to a field that's actually used by the plants. So with something like drip irrigation, where water is supplied through pipes and drips slowly onto the plants in a very targeted manner, the efficiency can be as much as 90%. So only 10% of the water is wasted. In furrow irrigation, where water flows from a canal into a furrow and, and wets the whole field, the efficiency can be below 50% in some cases. So more than 50% of the water is lost and isn't used productively. If we look at different types of farming and how irrigation efficiency might be achieved, in commercial farming, it's essentially driven by the economic bottom line. If it makes sense for a farmer to invest in irrigation efficiency, it's because he's going to make more money. He or she is going to make more money. And there are two ways that that can happen. Firstly, if the supply side increases the price of water, then it makes sense for the farmer to invest in efficiency because their water costs will be driven down. The second is through the use of quotas. Many farmers who get irrigation have a supply quota. So there's a limit to how much water they actually can, can use. And if they want to expand their agriculture or invest in more water intensive cropping, to use the same amount of water, they would have to invest in more efficient irrigation. With smallholder farming, it's more a question, well, water generally is a question of access. Most smallholder farmers don't have reliable access to water. So in, in a development sense, the critical issue is providing access to those farmers and then the financial resources for them to use that water as efficiently as possible. So the challenge is really to make sure that water is secured, and then once that water is secured for these small farmers, it's coupled with efficient irrigation.